Hello partners! Good golly, here I am. This is the story of a man everyone knows. It's also a story about the things he did that few people remember. The story takes place during a turbulent period in American history. It begins in 1843 when our honoree Bobby was born and ends in 1926, a full 82 years later when Bobby died. But friends, consider what happened in this country between 1843 and 1926. When our honoree was 10 years old, in 1853, America was in the early years of tearing itself apart. The Civil War would be starting in less than 10 years. Bobby was from the North. Even as a boy, he had a fierce loyalty to the Union cause. He was in some ways a boy genius, but would only show the world his real talents and abilities in years to come. When Bobby was old enough, he went to Harvard University. Then he went to the Army. He rose to the rank of captain. He became an aide to General U.S. Grant. He loved working with Grant, but within a month the war was over and Bobby went home to start a family and a career. He soon got married. He and his wife had three children. Two lived long lives and one died in infancy. Bobby became a lawyer and soon got the reputation of being one of the best attorneys in corporates, corporate lawyers in America. <laughs> now friends, here comes the good part. Within a few years, our honoree was elected a supervisor for the city of Chicago. Then President James Garfield heard about him and made him Secretary of War. Years later, President Chester Arthur appointed Bobby to the post of America's Minister to England. But there's more. In his later years, he was made President of the Pullman Railroad Car Company and, you know, the story, the company that made all those fancy sleeping cars and dining cars years ago. When our honoree died, 1926, he was buried with full honors in Arlington National Cemetery. <laughs> so partners, think about this. Our friend Bobby graduated from Harvard University served as a personal assistant to U.S. Grant, was a pioneering corporate lawyer, Secretary of War, Minister to England, and President of the Pullman Railroad Car Company. It's safe to say that few Americans were so, wore so many hats in one lifetime than did Bobby. Yet, sadly, and here's the point of this week's report. Bobby's not known for any of that. When he's remembered, he's only thought of as being the oldest son of... Now, friends, hold on to your hat. He was the oldest son of... You never guessed it. Abraham Lincoln. But wait. There's more to this story. He almost was in the box with his dad and mother at Ford's Theater, but decided not to go that night. However, he was standing near President Garfield at the train station when Garfield was shot in 1881. And Bobby was part of President McKinley's party when McKinley was assassinated in 1901. Whew. So the next time you hear about Abe Lincoln's son, Robert, you will remember that he was not just his father's son, 
He was one of the most interesting and important men of the late 1880s, Robert Todd Lincoln. More than just his father's son. So partners, you know the drill. Hit that big old red X up there in the corner at the right and you'll be coming right back to this week's report. Hey guys, I love you so much. I love you. Go get them, tigers!